Okay, so you've had the science, you've had about the drugs, so I'm going to bring you all back down to earth. Because it wouldn't be a talk from me if it didn't involve bowels. So I'm sorry about that. But as Professor Turnbull said, um, we, we want to improve the quality of life of our patients. So we have to look at all aspects of how the disease um, affects us. So, yes, I'll talk about bowels. Mm. So for those of you that don't know me, most of you do, um, I'm Catherine Feeney. And as it was pointed out to me on the previous slide, I've got sister in there, I'm not a nun. Um, that's a nursing sister. Um, but I'm in the clinic and um, people often find it a little bit easier to talk to me than they perhaps do to Professor Turnbull and the other clinicians. Um, so people do talk to me about, um, about the bowels and about the, the embarrassing things. And, and I just, although, you know, it, we joke about it, but seriously, it was uh, apparent that more and more people were actually coming with concerns about being unhappy about uh, problems with their, uh, with their gut, not just about the bowels, but the gut in its entirety. Um, so we started talking about this and we've started doing some extra work with this at the moment. So... <clears throat> So people were coming with symptoms of, of heartburn. So um, some were describing gastric reflux. So especially when they were lying down in bed at night, they were complaining of pain. Um, also complaining of bloated, distended abdomens, um, quite distended when we're talking about that, not just a little bit of bloating, quite distended abdomens, um, where it feels hard to touch. And they've also got problems with wind as well. Um, abdominal pain, generally discomfort, but also um, gripey pains. So this was this is really quite quite bad and quite difficult to deal with. Um, and, and then they would talk to me about constipation. So people would tell me that they were constipated. So obviously it's not an easy subject to talk about. So then we'd talk a little bit further, and then they would say, "Well, I get diarrhoea as well. I'm not constipated. I've got diarrhoea." So then we talked about the fact that there is a difference, that you can have diarrhoea that is part of constipation. And I think that was where people were maybe getting a little bit mixed up and we realised that this was a bigger problem than we initially thought. So we talked about um, overflow, which is diarrhoea that comes because of constipation. So I'll not dwell on it too much. But obviously these symptoms all have a big impact on your quality of life. And um, these are some of the things that, that people tell us. They've got loss of appetite, so very poor dietary intake. Um, feelings of fullness, so um, and actually managing to get through a full meal, sometimes not even half of a, of a portion. And this was frequent. Um, those that were on NG or peg feeds were not tolerating the feeds and were having to switch the pumps off halfway through. Um, and then other people were talking about um, not just losing weight, but not being able to maintain weight. So um, some people, or, or not being able to lose weight. So some people who have small, short stature and actually, you know, it might look quite skinny, but they've got a big tummy and the weight's all going around the tummy and they can't lose that. So we were, we were this, this has intrigued us. Um, they have talked about the... Um, bowel habit being altered and obviously affecting that in terms of not being able to get out of the house because of it. Um, and then the other big thing was fatigue. So this comes as part of the problems with the constipation. They actually get really fatigued and that had a huge impact. So when I talk to patients, I remind them that obviously, as everybody's talked about already today, that, that our mitochondria provide us the energy to our muscles and our gut is actually a muscle. Um, so if you think about if we haven't got if we have insufficient energy to the muscle, then it isn't going to contract and it won't squeeze. And my analogy with the toothpaste is the toothpaste won't come out of the tube unless we squeeze it. And if our um, abdomen isn't if our gut isn't working properly and it isn't squeezing, it's not going to empty. So. This um, led us to see well, can we do anything about this? Can we look at this in further detail? So um, you're going to meet Paula shortly, for those of you who haven't met her. Paula's a dietitian who's been doing some work with us. And Paula and I did um, a, a small audit of a group of patients 
um, eventually we got 100% um, response rate with our questionnaires and it trickled in, but, but good response. And it just go to, goes to show that 80% of the respondents suffered with gut dysmotility in some form. So this is an area that we need to look at. So Paula actually um, has looked at the, the, um, the information that's been provided on the questionnaires, done some further work, and she's going to present that for you. So what, what can we actually do to help you with this? So we can do a full assessment questionnaire, which is what Paula and I have been doing with the audit, but we're going to move that into practice and we're going to do that regularly with patients. Um, we, uh, that part of that assessment, for those of you who don't know it, is the Bristol stool chart. And that's my favourite tool that I bring to clinic, and if you haven't seen it, you need to ask me about it. Um, so we do a full assessment. And then we also review, we need to review medication, because sometimes constipation can be just due to the, some medications that you take, so we will review those. We may then refer you to a specialist gastroenterologist, and we have a couple in Newcastle that are interested in working with us. Um, and the reason for that is they, they can do gastric transit studies. So as I've said, it isn't just about the tummy, it can be from the stomach all the way down. So it may be that you have a slowed transit time from the stomach into the small bowel, so the whole bowel is affected, not just the large bowel. So um, the, the gastroenterologists do those, those tests and can help us with that. Um, they also um, have access to drug therapies that we aren't licensed to prescribe and that they can, so we're, we're working with them on those as well. Um, we're quite often now in, in clinic, which we've found really beneficial, is to do an abdominal x-ray and actually show the patient the x-ray. Because quite a lot of you have, have been insistent that you're not constipated, and then when you see your own x-ray, you believe what we say. <laughs> it's, it's there for your own eyes to see, and sometimes that's helpful. Um, so also we would look at, at laxatives, and we quite often prescribe them, but what we find is people say actually they are taking them sporadically so or I'm not constipated anymore so I've stopped taking my medication and what we think is your medication needs to be there as a maintenance dose so that's something that we would discuss as well and then obviously the dietary advice which I don't want to talk too much about because Paul is going to talk about that so what can you do so we've already had talks earlier about exercise, um, not just going to the gym, like we say, increasing your daily activity can help, and that will help with the bowel as well. Um, that we would want you to follow a well-balanced, low-fibre diet. Again, Paul is going to talk about that, but most people would think you would increase your fibre. Actually, we think that might be detrimental in some of our patients, so again, I'll let Paula talk about that. We want you to get used to monitoring your bowel function and taking more notice of that because this is a huge issue. Um, and we want you to take your, uh, your laxatives regularly as well or at least discuss that with us. So that's why I put on the bottom is talk to me about it because of everyone, I like talking about it the best and I don't mind. <laughs> okay, and I think that is me done. Uh, any questions? <laughs> Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. So um, I, I don't know if anybody has any questions. So I'm not sure probably too many not. people. Probably, <laughs> <laughs> it's probably probably not a decision. I mean, it is something that, that uh, I suppose about 50% of your phone calls are around this. There's an awful lot we can do to, to help, and I think it's really just something that people need to comment to Catherine about. Um, but as she says, phone her, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Catherine. You. Um.